Hello and welcome to Office, home of construction noises all day so far today. I'm your best friend Cake and I'm trying my best. I'm your best friend Cake and today I'm going to take you on a tour of my Halloween Lolita wardrobe. Please note that I am pronouncing Halloween with an asterisk at the end because I can't think of a single reason why you wouldn't wear this year round. So the first piece I have to show you today is this Guilty Milton Sweet Town Skirt by Alice and the Pirates. I love the little bits of purple and green in this print. I've paired it today with some Automatic Honey and some Ashen Grey and some Angelic Pretty accessories. Key features of this skirt include the pointy scalloping on the waist and little candy buttons. The construction of this skirt gives it a really interesting volume. It's really puffy and I like it. The print features the Guilty Melton Sweets Town. Very Nightmare Before Christmassy, but it's also its own thing. And here's the famous Alice and the Pirates chandelier. It's a cake and I'm into that. Other key aspects of this print include cat lollipops, Christmas trees, and bats! Whoosh! Spooky. Behold! The print's so nice I bought it twice. So here is Guilty Milton Sweets Town again, this time in blue. Also this time it's clearly the jumper skirt version. This dress is super comfortable, it's sheared in the back, and it's got a drop waist, which is sometimes difficult for me to wear, but nothing worth having comes easy. We've got a super scoopy neckline on this one, and these beautiful scallopy batty lapels. The bat wing lapels are in a delicious brown color that complements the navy really nicely. And I've got six delicious chocolate buttons. Ooh. I love the brown with the navy, and the different shades of lavender are so precious. I've got some more automatic honey happening, and a cute floppy hat from Antique Beast. So we've got more navy here with this overskirt by Enchantic Enchantely. It is a super stretchy elasticized waist so you can wear it over pretty much anything. And it's a really light organza fabric. It's a little bit more mature of a look. Hey look, more automatic honey. See the organza is really ghostly when it wafts this way. The print features a delightfully spooky castle. Some dead trees, and some kind of grotesque statue. It's like a haunted Downton Abbey. Mm. <gasps> I have elected to accessorize with a weird navy blue lily pad on my head. Intensely mature. If you've been around for a while, you've seen this one already, but I think it bears repeating. Rosy Midnight's Masquerade Ball at Midnight, Rosy. The print whose name I can never remember by Alice and the Pirates. Lots of shearing for lots of breathing. Ruffles down the front. A whole lot going on on the bodice. And secret bats, baby. More Alice and the Pirate chandeliers. More delectable color combos. And more, yes, more plague doctors playing accordions. Paired today with this precious little witch hat my mom got me from Sharper's Drug Mart. If you want to see more of this dress, you should check out my unboxing video from a year ago. The quality is really bad. Yeah, worse than this. Now, you might not consider Melty Ribbon Chocolate to be a Halloween dress, but I have already done my Easter dress video. And I have paired it with this pumpkin pin by Peppermint Fox. So for all intents and purposes, this is a Halloween dress. I got mine in the bitter colorway, and I have elected to keep the waist ties on because they are so cute. One of the best features of this is the halter neck. Halter necks are super cute, but there's always a slippage factor. So having these actual straps to support you is pretty amazing. You can see the sheeny, shiny chocolate segments, the fancy crown emblem buttons, and the ribbon. So much fabric. I love the pleating on this dress. Even the underskirt is pleated. So much fabric. And of course they have my matching beret. Does it bother me that the printing is upside down? Immeasurably, but there's nothing I can do about it. So that's fine. Whoosh. Now, you might be thinking, Hannah, 
how much is too much? When it should be clear to you that is something I obviously do not know. My final Halloween piece is Alice and the Pirates Turkey Nightmare Factory. I got mine in the brown colorway because brown is cute. And if for some reason you're not feeling the apron, it is removable. Na -na. See, it's downright casual now. I love the frilly neckline. It's got a sweet little dewy bow with Alice and the Pirates' notorious checkerboard pattern. We have cascading candies and gears. And we have what is arguably one of the strangest prints they've ever come out with. So this is the Tricky Nightmare Factory. See, ghosts and witches put skulls and sprinkles in the top. And then the machine, which is like sort of alive, I guess, decorates treats, but the ghosts also decorate the treats. My two favorite things about this dress are this stump. Why is there a stump? And the marshmallow ghost who is taking a shower in raspberry blood. I mean, obviously, if I had to choose my most precious son, it would be the marshmallow ghost. But there is something so fantastic about this stump. They look so confident. They're not worried at all about what they have to do with Halloween. They're just showing up to work. I think we could all stand to learn a lesson from this stump. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more themed wardrobe videos, I have made a playlist of all my past ones. I've also made a playlist of my unboxing videos and of my kitchen creation videos. If you have suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments below, or you can just leave praise for the Halloween stomp. And if you're not subscribed, I think you should be. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again after not too long.